this podcast is called Clarity Compressed because I always talk about this concept of clarity and I define that as perspective. People say, what's clarity, right? Well, it's perspective. It's when I want to go somewhere in the mall and I see the Apple store, it's useless unless I understand the perspective of you are here on the map. So I'm hoping that through this, you can help us get a little idea of where we are so we can get some more perspective so we can take the right next steps. Um, these questions have been in my mind around business, and I thought you'd be the perfect person to answer them. The very first one is, how can a leader rally their team in a time when they are separated by maybe geography, maybe by political belief or philosophical belief. There's so much of that. How can a leader begin to rally all of those people from those different areas and different geographies together toward a, a specific mission? Yeah. So one, a leader is an intelligent follower. And so what we want to do is make sure we use open-ended questions as an intelligent follower to find out what people are doing today what they like about it, what they don't like about it, and would it help them if, and how can they be of service to you? Once you gather that data from everyone, whether the separation is geographic, technological, or intelligible, it doesn't matter. Once we bind us with understanding, we then can utilize common values. I use gratitude, forgiveness, accountability, and effective communication in a constant and consistent manner. So I have a Monday morning meeting. We remind, remember, and recollect together the values that are core to what we all want, which is gratitude, forgiveness, accountability, and effective communication. And then utilizing the time, the man-made construct of what we're going to have, activity we get paid for, activity we don't, to align all of that by having a Monday morning meeting, a Wednesday check-in, and a Friday training with a Friday meeting, this keeps us all aligned in the collective consciousness so that we are all pursuing a collective potential. Uh, I had one of my Monday morning meetings. The lesson for the week was that they have to be um, connected or engaged on the weekends. I said, I don't even know what a weekend is. There's seven days of productivity. There's seven days of vacation. There's seven days of planned activities and not planned activities. There's seven days of activity I get paid for. Seven days of activities I don't get paid for. Seven days of sleep. And when we start putting things aligned in this remembrance, this reminding, and the recollection of a collective consciousness guided by that, boom. Yeah. We can do anything no matter how we're separated. When you say an intelligent follower... Can you explain that or define that a little further for me? Yeah. So people try to lead uh, in different ways. What I find a true leader is someone that's more interested than interesting. Someone that's more creative and curious than anyone. He is not demanding people. He or she is commanding. Collaborative efforts together is a commandment. We're working with one another. In order to work with one another, you have to be an intelligent follower to understand and meet people where they're at and get them to share a vision, a common goal of productivity, accessibility, and gratitude, a common goal of efficiency, effectiveness, and statistical success. So who in your in your experience, who did this so good? Like, give me an example of someone in Deepak your life. Deepak Chopra does it. Uh, Sadhguru does it. Wayne Dyer does it. Uh, as leaders, uh, um, um, Bill Gates was probably in the, in the corporate setting, uh, the most intelligent follower that, that I've met. You know, Jobs uh, didn't do it, right? Wozniak does it. Uh, mm. So Elon Musk that. does it. Elon Musk does it and Bezos doesn't do it. Just because you're financially successful uh, does not mean that you're, you're a great leader. A hundred years from now, people won't remember who the founder of Apple is. As big as Apple will be in a hundred years from now, they won't remember that because it doesn't have his name in there, right? It's not Eastman Kodak. And ironically, you know, people probably won't remember Eastman Kodak someday, <laughs> um, which was a pretty big company when I was young. Um, but moreover, right? they will always remember Bill Gates because he gave back. Warren Buffett, they always will remember. Another intelligent follower, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, a great leader. And so you may in the short term be well known for your financial successes, uh, but you know whether you're a president or a leader of a company or a philanthropy, uh, the intelligent follower will create a legacy always to be remembered and those that don't will be forgotten. Very nice, thank you for that. Um, two more questions. Uh, number one, 
the retail automotive industry, I have a, I have a lot of uh, clients in that industry. I know it like I, I love the retail automotive industry, but I'm always interested to see what other savvy, smart business leaders and thinkers think of it from almost an outsider perspective. What do you think of the retail auto industry? And I'm talking about dealers specifically. What do you think the position that dealers are in and how should they be thinking, right? All these disruptors coming in. What, what's your perspective on that? I've never asked you that. Yeah, so it's so interesting because I love buying and selling cars. And I do it in all aspects from retail to private, wholesale. I've done it, done it all. I didn't know that. And, and yeah, and so and I've done videos about it. Uh, but, but moreover, it's so interesting uh, because I would teach any sales uh, rep that I wanted to hire by just traveling around and teaching him how to buy a car and then pointing out who does it right and who does it wrong. Right, because there's so much uh, of a diversity of how people in the retail car industry work. Some work like I do with the ability to articulate quantitative value to exceed what I'm asking for, <laughs> and others lie, manipulate, cheat, oversell, back and sell, uh, and end up being, uh, which is just like lawyers, you know, with a reputation or a brand that they don't want. Mm -hmm. My vision is huge industry. I love it because it has every aspect of business that I love because it has the math, it has the sales, and it has the emotional, oh, yeah. it's, you know, but like the emotional connection part, people buy an emotion. Like I still, I emotionally, I sometimes I feel like I don't even care if I pay extra because this was so much fun. Yeah. No, I, I think that's, that's a great point. It, it's a very emotional purchase. If you look at all the purchases people make, there's a lot of emotion, which is why I love even marketing automotive. It's like, I can tie a car to any element of life, period, right? Oh, yeah. It connects and it's to better the than a house because you can you could buy a car every month if you wanted. You know what I mean? You could buy right. and sell cars every month. if Just for your person, right. you can't do that with a house. No, you know? no it's too complicated. It's too complicated. Yeah. It involves you moving, right? There's all that. Okay, <laughs> exactly. last question. Last question. Who's the entrepreneur of the decade? Of this decade? Yes. Elon Musk. Why? Uh, because he creates, it, he doesn't ask for crumbs. See, Bezos to me is probably uh, the entrepreneur of the, this this last 30 years. And the reason is I just imagined him being in his garage telling me he's going to be the richest man on earth selling books out of his garage. <laughs> but Elon Musk, and, but, but he's a straight businessman in distribution and marketplace. See, Elon Musk, he has changed the face of the universe. Like he is the reason will save the earth. I want my son to look at the hole in our atmosphere and say this, uh, you know what? I don't think people are gonna recycle enough ever to save this earth. I don't think, you know, our consumption is gonna decrease enough in the carbon, you know, I better figure out a way to clog that hole. Yeah. That's the way Elon Musk thinks, right? Like, you know, I'm not gonna inspire people to stop throwing plastic away right or stop using plastic like the plastic bag thing in california right. biggest hypocrisy ever as you're shoving all this plastic into <laughs> your a, paper a, bag into right. a paper bag right <laughs> but but like i want my kids and the people that i'm coaching to say hey let me uh convert trash into clean energy <laughs> now right. we're empty we're How do emptying I take this out and all of the landfills we're emptying the landfills and we're powering the earth and we're saving fossil fuels and trees and we're creating compost out of it. This is the way Elon Musk thinks. He's not a crumb. This guy thinks so big and it's for social impact, not like Bezos, who's just a marketplace, a margin maker. I respect his entrepreneurship, but man, to me, Elon Musk is the entrepreneur of the decade. Yeah, the way I hear that, it's like, Elon Musk has taught us how to dream and be a visionary and Bezos is like, I'm going to teach you how to transact, right? Like right. a boss, right? Everything, whether it's owning the Washington Post and steering narratives, right? It's like, so I can, can transact. I want to own it all. Yeah, I want my cut yeah. on everything. Yes, that is it. Wow, that's a great, I, I'll second your vote after that one, especially. Is there anything cool. else you'd like to say to the audience that I haven't covered or just like final words from Dave Meltzer? Final words are always the same. You know, if you're anxious, depressed, angry, frustrated, worried, guilty, resentful, be kind, man. Change your life. Do something good. Be kind to your future self. Do good deeds. Share my content. Do good deeds. I promise you, you can make a lot of money, help a lot of people, and have a lot of fun, and be happy and empower others to be happy. Be a 